Today, I want to explore one of the more prevalent weight loss lies that are out there. And you might have heard about this. It's this, don't eat any carbohydrates because that will lower your insulin levels and then you will burn more fat. That's a lie that's perpetuated by many, many influencers on social media and the keto-friendly industry. They tell you that if you skip carbohydrates, you will improve your insulin sensitivity and above all, you will burn more fat. The hypothesis they refer to is called the carbohydrate insulin hypothesis. That hypothesis has since been debunked over and over again from scientists all around the world. But let's take it from the top. <laughs> So, the carbohydrate insulin hypothesis. What does it actually say? On the one hand, it says that increased carbohydrate intake might chronically increase your insulin secretion and therefore inhibit your fatty acid lipolysis. And that will drive the fat into your adipose tissue that will also starve your metabolic active tissue, muscles and heart, which will lead to faster hunger responses and eventually to overeating. The second thing the hypothesis says is that if you lower your carbohydrate intake, that will reduce your insulin segregation and hence will restore your lipolysis. And that will then lead to more fat burn and eventually to weight loss. So there are a couple of problems with this. First of all, the carbohydrate insulin hypothesis challenges fundamentally that a calorie is a calorie. And with that, it challenges a lot of scientific research that has been done before, during and after the postulation of this hypothesis. It also ignores the fact that reduced lipolysis and high insulin levels are not predictors for fat mass. And it also ignores that high insulin levels in obese individuals especially do not necessarily directly correlate with low glucose plasma levels. Well, we'll talk about this a little bit more later on. I want to talk about how this hypothesis was developed, the research that has been done, and then we're going to talk about how it is rebutted. In 1972, a physician and cardiologist, uh, Robert Atkins, published a book which called The Atkins Diet Revolution, The High Caloric Way to Stay Thin Forever. In that book, Atkins hypothesized two things. Severe restriction of carbohydrates would confer a substantial metabolic advantage, and therefore large amounts of fat could be consumed without significant weight gain. Basically, it laid the foundation for a very early ketogenic diet approach. So, soon after this book was published, the debate among scientists emerged. One side of the scientists postulated that a calorie is, a, is, a calorie is outdated, and it would violate the second law of thermodynamics, Different thermic effects of macronutrients, fat, carbohydrates, and protein, would illustrate this principle. On the other hand, you had scientists that who didn't disagree with this statement, but thought that those were, uh, changes would be irrelevant for weight loss. In their view, any greater loss of weight would not be due to the macronutrient-specific differences in the energy, but to overall dietary energy and the changes in energy expenditure. Uh, journalist Gary Taubes formed the Nutrition Science Initiative on NUSI, designed to demonstrate the efficiency of carbohydrate-restricted diets. NUSI had an operating budget of about $40 million, mostly coming from one big donor. They gave a research grant to several clinical researchers, and one of them, for example, is Kevin Hall, a senior investigator with the NIH. Hall had the task to test the carbohydrate insulin hypothesis in humans, which is not an easy task, especially if you want to do a standardized protocol. So in 2016, Hall published his research in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition. You will find this study in the description of this video under read of the week. And I really encourage you to read it. I just gonna read you the conclusions. I'm gonna explain you what it means. The isocaloric ketogenic diet was not accompanied by increased body fat loss, but was associated with relatively small increases in energy expenditure that were near the limits of detection. So what that means is that an isocaloric ketogenic diet, which means it has the same calories than a non-ketogenic diet in the control group, was not accompanied by increased body fat loss. So you didn't see any more body fat loss because that person was on a ketogenic diet. The only thing you could measure is a small increase of energy expenditure near the limits of detection. Or in other words, the ketogenic diet doesn't lead to more body fat loss. This is not the only study that came out with Nusi. One study, even larger, was conducted at Stanford and found also no differences in weight loss between keto diets and non-keto diets. Again, you can find all the studies in the description of this video. To Nusi's and to Tauber's credit, they always had the intention to found objective, non-biased science. And like with all science, not every question is answered and a lot of questions are still open. But there's also a body of knowledge outside of Nusi-sponsored work that shows clearly that the carbohydrate insulin hypothesis is not related to weight loss. In this paper, for example, 28 studies are compared to each other. And each study was isocaloric, which means only the macronutrient ranges changes, but not the overall calories. All those studies conducted over more than 40 years by many authors, they were weighted statistically and then compared to each other. It turns out the majority showed a very slight 26 calories per day advantage 
on a low fat diet, not on a high fat diet. But 26 calories per day are neg negligible. Or in other words, keto diets might lead to weight loss, but it's not because of low carbohydrates or high fat intake. It is because you are in a caloric deficit. After more than 50 years of research on low carbohydrate diets and the carbohydrate insulin hypothesis, there are certainly still questions open. But one thing remains very clear. And the caloric deficit is always the main driver for your fat loss, regardless of your diet. So what does it mean for you? We are bombarded with misinformation all the time. RFK Jr. is a master of ignoring science, and so are many others on social media. It is crucial not just for our health, but for also to keep a democracy functioning, not to fall for misinformation. A free and fair society is built on facts and not on lies. When it comes to nutrition and diets, my wish would be that we move away from this debate about single diet models like the ketogenic diet and move forwards to more research of how people can shift to healthier eating without yo-yo effect and without falling back. Either way, if you want more, order my new book. That's it from me for today. I see you soon. I'm out.